Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Yes, it's time once again for Eve Arden in another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, the football fever is sweeping through our schools once more, and Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, is no exception. No, indeed. Most of the kids at Madison eat, sleep, and talk nothing but football. Of course, it doesn't affect me one way or another. When I start my class in the morning, I simply bark the signal for order, call my monitors into a huddle, and with a single wing to the right, do a reverse line buck through the second act of Macbeth. <laughs> Last Wednesday, when Walter Denton, one of my pupils, joined my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and me at breakfast, I chided him about not doing his homework properly. His reaction was instantaneous. I don't see how you can say that, Miss Brooks. Why, ever since the fall term started, I've been doing my football religiously. <laughs> Stay breath. No, you're not quite sure, Walter, that those little coffee cakes and some milk will be enough for you. No, ma'am. <laughs> That's all I've got in the house Oh, then it'll be enough <laughs> Boy's a realist <laughs> I wish I had something else to offer you A growing boy should eat a big breakfast Especially an athlete like Walter Athlete? Yeah, I told Mrs. Davis about it before you came into breakfast, Miss Brooks I'm going out for the team this year I've just got to get my letter You? But Walter, you don't seem to have too much aptitude for athletics Who hasn't? Well, the only reason I didn't make the football team last year was be because I hurt my arm trying out for the baseball team. <laughs> Did you make the baseball team, dear? Oh, well, no, Mrs. Davis, but only because I hurt my foot trying to get my M in track. <laughs> and I'd have made that, too, if my ribs weren't so sore from water polo. Well, that's one thing about Walter. If he doesn't get his M from Madison, he'll get it from the Mayo Brothers Clinic. <laughs> But maybe you'll be luckier this season, Walter. Now, as soon as you finish moistening your fingers and picking cake crumbs off the tablecloth, we can get started for school. Okay, Miss Brooks. Gee, if I do make the team, I'll be playing alongside my pal Stretch Snodgrass. He's one of the best athletes Madison ever had, you know. Really? Sure. He's a three-letter man. He's a three-letter man in my English class, too. After A, B, and C, he's a goner. <laughs> Well, we're almost there, Miss Brooks. We'll park down by the athletic field, if you don't mind. Stretch might be working out early this morning. All right, Walter. You're certainly fond of the kid, aren't you? Yeah, he's my buddy, Miss Brooks. And I want you to know that we're sure grateful to you for keeping him eligible this year. Gosh, if you didn't help him with his studies after school, I don't know what would happen. I do. <laughs> well, here's the football field. I'll just roll up these windows and lock the door. <laughs> Well, you've got the ball. Why aren't you running with it? He <laughs> came right through the window. Are you all right, Miss Brooks? If I am, I owe it all to my shatterproof skin. <laughs> yeah, sorry, folks. I don't usually kick them that crooked. Oh, well, that's okay, Stretch. Gosh, look at all that glass. Lucky the laces weren't cut. That football is school property. <laughs> well, I'm school property, too. Let's take a look at my laces. <laughs> Well, I'm sure glad you're okay, Miss Brooks. Well, the reason I'm working out this early is because they're remodeling my room at home, and I had to sleep on our drafty back porch, and I got a bad king in my leg. You got a king in your leg? <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you pull a ligament. <laughs> yeah, those ligaments can sure cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> Why are they remodeling your room, Stretch? Well, you know, our living quarters are behind my father's pet shop. Yeah. And Dad got a big shipment of marmosets in the other day, and he needs more space. But it's only temporary. It'll take a few weeks to switch the bedrooms around, then I'll be back indoors again. Yeah, but meantime, you can get a bad draft and pull another lingaman. <laughs> <laughs> or even bruise a tendon. <laughs> no kidding, Stretch. You've got to find another place to sleep. Walt is right, Stretch. Wait a minute. Haven't you got an aunt who lives alone? You mean the one you met at the movies the other night? Yes. She seemed inordinately fond of you. Oh, that's just the way she acts. She really likes me. <laughs> but 
she lives way out on Clark Street. That's halfway to Clay City. Well, look, if you're worried about getting to school in the morning, Stretch, I'll be happy to pick you up and drive you in. After all, if we're going to be on a football team together, we'll be practicing a lot in the mornings. Gee, that's awful nice of you, Walter. I'll call Aunt Minnie before school this morning. I'm sure she won't mind, and then I'll have my dad move my things out there in our truck. Oh, great. Maybe the marmosets would carry them over for you. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you got the idea for me to move, Miss Brooks. That porch is pretty drafty. Well, I'm going to practice a little while longer. Well, how about you, Walter? Want to work out? Oh, sure, Stretch. How about you, Miss Brooks? Want to watch? No, thanks, Walter. I'd better get into school. Mr. Conklin wants to see me before my first class. Well, okay, but you don't know what you're missing. Old Stretch here sure has an educated toe. Good. Let's hope it may one day spread to his brain. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I've summoned you here to my office to commend you for the splendid work you're doing with Stretch Snodgrass. Well, thank you, Mr. Conklin. But you've got to keep that boy eligible for football. If Madison's team doesn't make a presentable showing this season, I'll never hear the end of it from Jason Brill. Clay City's principal? The same. He's the bane of my existence, Miss Brooks. We've been rivals a good many years. Oh, even before you were principals of rival schools? Before we were teachers. Even in state normal, I found him abnormal. <laughs> He'll go to any lengths to defeat and embarrass me. Now, Brill phoned me last night and said he'd be dropping in to see me this morning. He said he'd have a juicy bit of news for me. Well, if he thinks he's got juicy news for me, I've got still juicier news for him. Do you know what it is, Miss Brooks? You're opening an orange aid stand. <laughs> I just learned that Biff Mooney, one of the greatest college football players, is interested in a high school coaching job in this part of the country. I've already opened negotiations for his services by mail, and it's a foregone conclusion that he'll accept my offer. <laughs> oh, I can't wait until I see the expression on Brill's face when I tell him about it. <laughs> in some states, that laugh would be banned. <laughs> Come in. Well, good morning, Osgood. Good morning to you, Jason. I have a juicy bit of news for you this morning. Well, I have a juicy bit of news for you, too, Osgood. Uh, oh, pardon me. How are you, Miss Brooks? Juicy, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Osgood, I've just signed Biff Mooney to coach the Clay City football team this season. Well, isn't that nice? Now I'll just tell you what I've got up my... Biff Mooney! <laughs> Remember that expression you were waiting to see on Mr. Brill's face? Yes. You're wearing it. <laughs> now, see here, Brill. In the first place, I don't believe a man like Mooney would be knucklehead enough to sign with your outfit. But even if he has, a good coach can't make a team without material. Material? Why, last season our backs went through your line like it was damp cheesecloth. Well, it's not going to be that way this season, Mr. Brill. Uh, go ahead, Miss Brooks. Tell him. This season, it's going to be dry cheesecloth. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some great players on the squad. Players like Stretch Snodgrass. Stretch Snodgrass? Who's he? <laughs> That's him. What was that? Uh, pardon me, Osgood. Is that a football in your lap, or have you gone off your diet? <laughs> I've told those kids a thousand times... Go... Come in. Well, I'm awful sorry, Mr. Conklin, but I'm afraid I kicked my football in here. I'm afraid you did, Stretch, but I don't understand why. I thought I told you to confine your practicing to the other end of the field. But I did, Mr. Conklin. That's where I kicked it from. Well, there's absolutely no excuse in the world for... Nice kick, boy! <laughs> to tell me that that ball was propelled here by that boy's foot? It wasn't flown here by one of his blue jay corn plasters. <laughs> that, Mr. Brill, is our Stretch Snodgrass, one of the greatest triple threat quarterbacks in the country. Stretch, this is Mr. Brill, principal of Clay City High. Hi, sir. Hello, son. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, where did you learn to kick like that? Oh, it's just natural with me, I guess. But if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss football no more this morning. I just got some bad news about my pal, Walter Denton. He's been cut off the football squad. Why, Stretch? Because he was the 29th man on it, and we only got 28 uniforms. 
Well, it would be a little embarrassing if he were sent in as a substitute. <laughs> I don't see how a spindly pippet like Denton could go out for the team in the first place. He couldn't carry a football in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, you're talking about my pal. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me. Gosh, when he heard I was moving out to my aunt's place on Clark Street, he even offered to pick me up every morning. Uh, did you say you were moving to Clark Street? Yes, sir. It's way out in the 3900 block. Yeah, but that's halfway to Clay City. Why, you're in a district that... Why don't we have lunch together this afternoon, boy? <laughs> Stay in the school cafeteria? About 12? Just the two of us? From the picture you were meant for me? Now, see here, Brill. Yeah, tell me, I... boy, do you kick them that far often? Well, without I should do any boasting, I almost never done no kick in which the ball don't travel over 70, 80 yards hardly. Amazing. And how do you pass? In English, by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities. Help stop tooth decay before it starts. <laughs> All during my morning classes, I worried about Jason Brill having lunch with Madison's star quarterback. When I communicated my fears to Mr. Conklin, he said... Miss Brooks, we've got to find out what that blackguard is up to at all costs. So when lunch period finally rolled around, I followed the blackguard into the school restaurant and borrowed an apron from one of the girls behind the steam table. Uh, come over here to this corner table, Stretch. We won't be disturbed here. Okay, Mr. Brill. Uh, now, sit down, my boy. Now then, there's something I must talk to you about in strictest confidence. In strictest confidence? It concerns your football career. Who gets the lima beans? Uh, Miss Brooks, I, I thought this was a self-service cafeteria. Oh, it is, Mr. Brill, except when we have a distinguished visitor like yourself. Then I like to see that he's well taken care of. Uh, I brought you each the blue plate. Just what I wanted. Succotash and lima beans. Thanks, Miss Brooks. You're perfectly welcome, Stretch. Now, please continue with your confidential conversation, gentlemen. You were saying, Mr. Brill, that you wanted... Yeah, to... I uh, wanted to tell you what a lovely day it is. Uh, sun shining, not a bit humid, although cumulus clouds do seem to be gathering in the east. In fact, it looks like we might be in for a bit of a blow. This is going to be a weather report. I might as well blow, too. I'll go get some dessert for you. Uh, do that. Hey, now then, Stretch, I'll come right to the point. In your present address on Clark Street, you're eligible to enter Clay City High, and that's what I want you to do. Transfer immediately. Transfer? From Madison? Exactly. You said yourself that your pal Walter Denton couldn't get on your football team because there's no uniform for him. Isn't that right? Yeah, but... Well, I... every American boy should have the right to play football. Shouldn't he? Of course he should. Now, with you off the Madison team, there'd be another uniform available for Walter. Well, I never thought of it like that. Well, think of it. <laughs> On account of me, Walter won't get to play at all. He'll never get his letter in. Gosh, fine pal I am. Yes, I don't know why he even talks to you. Now, Stretch, I've got to get back to Clay City High at once, but I've arranged for our new coach, Biff Mooney, to meet you outside your main gate after school. Biff Mooney? Is he your new coach? Yeah, of course. Now, Biff will accompany you to your parents, Stretch, and get their consent to the transfer. It's just a formality, you understand. Yes, sir. I guess if it's going to help Walter, I'll have to do it. Mm. 
But I hate to think of what Mr. Conklin will say when he hears about this. Don't forget about Mr. Conklin. We know that what we're doing is right. It's for our pal's happiness. There's absolutely no reason to be afraid of Mr. Conklin. Then I'll go right down and ask him for the transfer. You wait, boy. Wait till I get out of the building. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, every time I got near the table, they were talking about the weather. Ah, well, perhaps our fears were exaggerated, Miss Brooks. Granted, Brill might try to get away with something. Oh, come in. Well, it's straight snodgrass. Come right in, my boy. Sit down. Here, take my chair. Sit by the window. Shall I open it for you? Do you want the fan on? Hot towel? Pedicure? <laughs> Conklin, you don't know what I'm here for. If you're worried about that window you broke this morning, forget it. What a kick that was. <laughs> Thanks, but, but you still don't know what I want, Mr. Conklin. Name it and it's yours. What is it you want, my boy? I want to transfer to Clay City High. Certainly. I'll just sit down at my desk, get a pen and fill out the necessary... A transfer to Clay City High! Cotton, gauze, penicillin. That's fire! What poppycock did Brill feed you at lunch, Stretch? Well, he didn't feed me no poppycock. It, it was, was succotash. <laughs> well, he can't get away with it this time. No matter what he told you, you can't transfer to Clay City. You don't live in their district. Oh, I do now. What? Well, I used to, but I do now. <laughs> you see, sir, I've moved in with my aunt, and she lives right near Clay City. Moved in with your aunt? And whose bright idea was that? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to lie down somewhere. <laughs> Miss Brooks! In front of a streetcar, I think. <laughs> oh, let me explain, Mr. Conklin. Stretch was sleeping in the draft, and I thought it was so That's your trouble, Miss Brooks. You think too much. Stretch, do you know about this transfer yet? No, sir. They just know I'm going to live with Aunt Mamie. But I'm meeting Biff Mooney after school, and he's going to ask them for their permission. Stretch, let me ask you a question. In all the years you've been here, Mr. Conklin has always treated you fairly, hasn't he? I'll rephrase the question. <laughs> in fact, I'll forget it. <laughs> Just promise me that you'll drop into my classroom after school today. Sure, Miss Brooks. That is, if somebody will tell Biff Mooney to wait for me. We'll take care of Biff, Stretch. Now, remember, I want you to come to my classroom immediately after school. Okay, Miss Brooks. See you later. Right, Stretch. Bye, Mr. Conklin. Not goodbye, Stretch. Just... Aloha. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, it was you who got us into this situation. And I... I'll get us out of it. And I think I can, Mr. Conklin. I think I've got a plan. A plan? Supposing, instead of being taken to Stretch's house, Biff Mooney were taken to my house. I don't understand. Stretch wouldn't take him to your house. No, the real Stretch wouldn't. And Stretch's real parents won't be there either. But Biff Mooney doesn't know Stretch from a hole in the ground, does he? Well, come in. Oh, it's Walter Denton. I was just looking for Harriet and I Mr. thought... Mr. Conklin, that... shake hands with a hole in the ground. <laughs> I just can't believe that you're Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, well, sure I am, Mr. Mooney. Who did you think was? Well, you just don't sound like Mr. Brill said you would. The way he described it, you talked, well, differently. What's the way I talk got anything to do with? Gee, I ain't never said nothing to get insulted for it by nobody, hardly. <laughs> I take it all back. Well, this is the house, Mr. Mooney. Come on in. My old lady always leaves the door open for me. All right, Stretch. Oh, there's my dear old mom in the rocker. Mom, I want you should meet Biff Mooney. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, Mrs. Snodgrass. Likewise, I'm sure, Mr. Mooney. Oh, if you'll pardon my saying so, ma'am, you seem hardly old enough to be the mother of such a big boy. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> now, what can we do for you, Coach? A coach? Well, how did you know I was a football coach? Well, it's a cinch you don't crochet no doilies for a living. <laughs> <laughs> a built on him. He wants me to transfer from Madison to Clay City High, Ma. Oh, now that's a serious step. I know it is, Mrs. Snodgrass. <laughs> you see, it, it's for the boy's own good, and that's why I'm here today, to get you to acquiesce. Stretch, this guy's getting fresh. Turn him out. <laughs> Don't you see, ma'am? We, we just want your sanction. My what? Uh, you're okay. 
You're okay, too, but what do you want? <laughs> we want to direct the transfer to Clay City High. Well, I don't know. This here Madison learns him pretty good. I think we'll keep him where he's at. Oh, please, Mrs. Snodgrass, now don't, don't be hasty. Maybe we should discuss this with Mr. Snodgrass as well. Oh, sure. Pop's right in the next room. I'll call him. Come on in here, Pop! <laughs> Meet the little man, Mr. Mooney. Oh, I'm delighted to know you, Mr. Snodgrass. Yous are too kind. <laughs> We'd like to get your permission for stretch to transfer to Clay City High, Mr. Snodgrass. Oh, it's a wonderful school. Nothing and... doing. Transfers is for streetcars. <laughs> no, no, our boy wouldn't be happy in no Clay City High. That their school just don't offer no advantages, no how. Don't offer nothing, know how. Well, I don't see how you folks can, folks can talk like this. Believe me, it ain't easy. <laughs> I gotta go get supper ready, Pa. You get rid of, uh, say goodbye to Mr. Mooney for me whenever he leaves. Like, right away, I hope. <laughs> okay, Ma. See you later. Well, I guess that's the story, Mr. Mooney. No, now, wait, Stretch. Uh, Mr. Snodgrass, if you'll let me tell you something about Clay City... Nothing uh... doing. I ain't taking any chances with my only child's happiness. I... I love this boy. <laughs> Papa, dear. Now, get out of here and help your ma in the kitchen. You see, uh, Mr. Moon... I love you too, Papa. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> now, Mr. Mooney, if you... Stretch, what are you hanging around for? Kiss me, Papa. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he's such an affectionate little jerk. A youngster. <laughs> We've always been quite close. Hey, excuse me, Daddy, but I saw your car outside and the door was open, My so I... My daughter, Harriet. Harriet, go away, child. But, Daddy... Just a minute. I thought you said that Stretch was your only child. Stretch. Your brother, Harriet. <laughs> now go on out into the kitchen. Your mother will explain the whole thing to you. Oh, is Mother here? Stop the question. Just go in and Stop see if Mother's on the did. table, Pa. Well, if it isn't me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Harriet, how nice to see you. Why don't you go home to your mother? Her mother. <laughs> she did come home to her mother, Ma. <laughs> I guess it's time we told you, Harriet. I am your mother. <laughs> your father and I, uh, your father and me, we've been secretly married for 16 years. But I'm almost 17. I'm over 17. I was hoping you wouldn't notice it. <laughs> what is this all about? Mrs. Snodgrass, I demand to know the truth. Mrs. Snodgrass. Uh, you might as well know the whole story, Harriet. As a poor but honest immigrant, I entered this country illegally. Your mother and I started out from the old country together. But I, your mother, couldn't make it. <laughs> they shot me at the border. <laughs> Four years later, I was smuggled into the country. With a group of Oriental laborers. <laughs> Oriental laborers? Don't look down your nose at me, girl. I helped build Boulder Dam. <laughs> Snodgrass. Mrs. Snodgrass? Miss Brooks ain't Mrs. Snodgrass. My mother's Mrs. Snodgrass. Yes. <laughs> Go away, boy. We're busy. But, Mr. Conklin, I waited in Miss Brooks' classroom like she said. And... Mr. Conklin? Miss Brooks? Hey, what is all this, and who are you? Well, I'm Stretch Snodgrass. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass? Oh, did you call me Biff? Biff? <laughs> are you Biff Mooney? Well, I was when I came in here, but right now I was... <laughs> Oh, it was absurd to think that this ridiculous scheme would work. This is the real stretch snodgrass, Mr. Mooney. If he wants a transfer, I guess there's nothing we can do to stop him. And after all that iodine I used at the border. <laughs> but I won't need no transfer now, Mr. Conklin. That's what I come over to tell Miss Brooks. I talked to the manager of the football team just now, and he said they're getting another uniform, so Waller can be on the team, too. Oh, boy, that's great, Stretch. Hey, instead of living with your aunt, you can move in with me. You can move in with me. <laughs> you can move in with... You can sleep in the gym. <laughs> Eve 
Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after the smoke had cleared away, and also Walter Stretch and Harriet, Mr. Conklin and I took a very bewildered Biff Mooney by the arms and pointed him toward the nearest streetcar. And now, Mr. Mooney, you may return to your unscrupulous employer and tell him that once again he has been soundly defeated by superior brain power. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Conklin, I, I did get a contract from Mr. Brill, but if he's going to get me into things like this all the time, I've got a good mind not to sign it. Well, if you'll excuse me now... Uh, uh, hold, hold on there, boy. You say you haven't signed your coaching contract with Clay City? That's right, sir. Well, well... <laughs> Mr. Mooney, why don't we have dinner together at my place? There's something I'd like to discuss with you. Why, I guess that could be arranged. Fine. We'll have dinner at eight. Uh, care to join us, Miss Brooks? No, thanks. I'm going to Clay City tonight to see the fireworks. Uh, fireworks? Unless I've miscalculated, if you and Biff are having dinner at eight, Mr. Brill should be blowing his top at nine. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Frank Nelson, and Leif Erickson. <laughs> Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palm Olive shaving cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either palm olive brushless or palm olive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new palm olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for Eve Arden in another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, they say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And if that's the case, Connie Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, should feel a bit more hopeful about her bashful biologist, Philip Boynton. Yes, Mr. Boynton left town last Monday for a biologist convention upstate. And by Friday, I was confident that absence did make the heart grow fonder. The only trouble was it was this little English teacher's heart which was doing the growing fonder of. Mrs. Davis, my landlady, was discussing the absent one with me at breakfast Friday morning. 
Have you heard from Mr. Boynton at all since he's left Connie? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis. I heard from him yesterday. He just poured his heart out to me. Really, dear? What did he say? Lift up the sugar bowl, his postcards underneath it. <laughs> A postcard? Let's see that. Hmm. Having wonderful time. Glad I am here. <laughs> then he says, no more for now. Writer's cramp must have set in. <laughs> That's just his subtle way of informing me that he's too busy to write me a letter. But he won't be gone too much longer. Well, I think you're foolish to sit around and twiddle your thumbs while he is gone. After all, there are other fish in the sea. Yes, but on my salary, it's a little tough to make the bait as attractive as it should be. <laughs> Although Mr. LeBlanche did ask me for a date last Monday evening. Mr. LeBlanche, the French teacher? That's right. Why, he's charming, Connie, and so handsome. Did you accept? Of course not, Mrs. Davis. I'd just seen Mr. Boynton off on the train. Well, the next time Mr. LeBlanc asked you to go out with him, I think you should go. Why, when I was your age, if a man with his looks asked me out, I jumped at the chance. When I was your age, I'll jump too. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get another chance to go out with Mr. LeBlanc. He's been very attentive all week. In fact, he asked me to get to school early this morning so he could talk to me for a few minutes before class. Oh, he did? Yes, I told Walter Denton about it yesterday, and he said he'd pick me up in plenty of time this morning. That's what I like, a kid who keeps his promises. Come in, Walter. I left the latch off for him. Hiya, Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. Well, breakfast isn't finished yet, I see. Not like it's going to be when you sit down. <laughs> Pull up a chair, dear. Any news from Mr. Boynton since yesterday's postcard? No, Walter. He wasn't kidding when he said no more for now. Oh, well, you won't be lonesome. Not with Mr. LeBlanc around. Mr. LeBlanc? That's the second time his name has popped up in the last five minutes. Did you say <clears throat> popped up, Connie? Yes, why? I knew there was something I'd forgotten. I put two slices of bread in the Toastmaster over an hour ago. I'll be back as soon as I make a few extra slices. <laughs> We'll be leaving soon, Mrs. Davis. Don't make too many. Or too few. <laughs> now then, Walter, what's all this about Mr. LeBlanc and me? Well, if you ask me, there's something pretty continental going on inside that handsome head of his. Well, he has been rather attentive since Mr. Boynton left, but that could be common courtesy. Courtesy nothing. That's continental. <laughs> <laughs> Tell by the way he talks to you, Miss Brooks, the way he uses his native language. What do you mean, Walter? Mr. LeBlanc talks to me only in English. He may talk to you in English, but he looks at you in French. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he does, I don't understand it. But Mr. LeBlanc does lapse into his native tongue occasionally. And just between us, Walter, I can't understand one word of it. You see, when I went to school, I studied much more Spanish than French for some reason. Well, what was the reason? A Spanish teacher named Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I wouldn't want Mr. LeBlanc to think I didn't know what he was talking about. Well, don't let that bother you, Miss Brooks. Harriet Conklin's a whiz at French. She can interpret anything that you don't understand. Of course, she's a little young to interpret the way Mr. LeBlanc looks at you. <laughs> I wish you'd stop auditioning your sinuses, Walter. <laughs> well, look, Miss Brooks, I'm not trying to be fresh, you know that. But both Harriet and myself feel that it's about time Mr. Boynton was made to feel that he shouldn't feel so sure of you. How does that go again? <laughs> Don't you see, when he comes back, if there's a lot of buzz-buzz about how you went out with Mr. LeBlanc while he was gone, maybe Mr. Boynton will leave the ranks of the walking dead and make his move. Well, it has been tried before. The plotting to capture one's mate is an age-old story, Miss Brooks. Why, if they were truthful about it, 95% of all the men ever born would have to say to their women, you made me love you. I didn't want to do it. From the picture, Jolson sings again. <laughs> of course, Mr. LeBlanc is an extremely attractive person. Sure he is. And there's nothing to it, Miss Brooks. All you've got to remember when you see Mr. LeBlanc at school is the three little letters... O-U-I O-U-I Fine The next time Mr. LeBlanc asks me for a date This little piggy will go wee, wee, wee All the way home <laughs> Da, 
da 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 do entree. Ah, good morning, Miss Brooks. I hope I do not interrupt something. Oh, not at all, Mr. LeBlanc. I was just combing my cactus. <laughs> Pardon? This little plant on my desk here. Oh. One of my pupils gave it to me. It was quite a surprise the way he gave it to me, too. <laughs> he hid it on my chair. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Oh, merci, mademoiselle. Uh, what did you want to talk to me about, Mr. LeBlanc? Well, Miss Brooks, beautiful Miss Brooks, for some time now I felt that you are... Uh, as I look on you, Miss Brooks, I feel that you're not only a lovely to look at person, but one who... Uh, Miss Brooks, are you listening to me? You lost me after beautiful. <laughs> I, uh, I, I know that we have not spent too much time in the company of each. That's very true. Uh, <laughs> however, what I wish to say is something that I do not too easily find the words to do it. And so I have taken the liberty of writing it down in this note. A note? Uh, oui. It is written in my native language, Miss Brooks. This still comes to me faster than English. You, you can read French, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. Then please do. <laughs> Here. Let's see. Uh... My cher Miss Brooks, ça me semble que nous allons. Uh huh. <laughs> Pouvez-vous me faire? Uh huh. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks. Well, from what I gather here, it's pretty obvious that I'll need some time to think this thing over. <laughs> well, as you say, Miss Brooks, I suggest we meet in the school cafeteria at lunchtime. Fine. And then, until we meet again. J'essaierai de contrôler mes émotions. Je ne serai pas un petit gosse. Oh, I don't know. I think the Dodgers still have a chance. <laughs> Next year. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. <laughs> Well, when lunch period rolled around, I hastened toward the cafeteria, hoping to find Harriet Conklin so I could get a translation of Mr. LeBlanc's note. As I passed the office of our beloved principal, however, Mr. Conklin stopped me with one of his typically warm and cordial greetings. Halt, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Crap. I was just hurrying to lunch, Mr. Conklin. I... You usually are. I just want a moment of your time... I noticed this morning that Mr. LeBlanc stepped into your room for a few moments. And although I've never been a hearty advocate of faculty fraternization, in this instance, I think it's splendid that LeBlanc is making friends with someone. He's rather an aloof chap. No aloofer than some others, I know. Uh, he's quite a nice person, though. I'm sure he is. But to get to the point, Miss Brooks, I have a used car in my garage that Mr. LeBlanc said he wanted to buy a few days ago. However, since that time, he's been rather evasive. Although I hate to part with the car, it seems a shame not to consummate this deal once I've become adjusted to the idea. 
The more so since I was convinced that I had Mr. LeBlanche on the hook. Uh, interested. <laughs> what kind of a car is it, Mr. Conklin? It's sort of a composite, Miss Brooks. Stutz motor, I believe. <laughs> Quite old, of course, but it'll make fine transportation. Runs like a charm. Then why do you want to sell it? I can't afford all the repair bills. <laughs> that is to say, I bought a new used car about six months ago, and the price they offered me on a trade-in was so ridiculous, I decided to sell it privately. Oh. Frankly, I was amazed at the rapidly declining interest in the Stutz automobile. <laughs> Hence, I'm willing to part with it for a measly $50. I'd feel selfish about holding on to it. I see what you mean, Mr. Conklin. Why should you let that beautiful car rot in your garage when some lucky fellow could be pushing it all over town? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, I am not a man to shilly-shally. I'd take it as a personal favor if you encouraged Mr. LeBlanche to go through with this deal. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, and I'm... And thanks for whatever efforts you put forth in this matter. Good day. Good day, and thank you, Honest Osgood. <laughs> Hiya, Miss Brooks. Are you going to have lunch with the fabulous Frenchman? Eventually, Walter, but first I'd like Harriet Conklin to translate this note he gave me. He says he writes better in his native language. Note, huh? Oh, we're making progress, all right. Let's see it. I've had three terms of French. You've had three terms of first-term French. <laughs> I'd better wait for Harriet. Please, Miss Brooks. Harriet might be late. You don't want to let Mr. LeBlanche cool his heels in the cafeteria, do you? Why not? Eating lunch with hot heels is very uncomfortable. <laughs> now, give me the note, Miss Brooks. If it's not too tough, maybe I can translate it. Ah, yeah. Ça me semble que non avons un bien amiti. Oh, oh sure. Now, this is simple, Miss Brooks. It merely says that he thinks you're wonderful and that he has long worshipped you from afar. What? And that now he cannot stay away another moment, but must have a date with you at once. Well. I knew it, Miss Brooks. He's stuck on you. Now, go on into that cafeteria and give him a quick wee. I'll go as quick wee as I possibly can. <laughs> See you later, Walter. <laughs> now we're getting someplace. Wait till Mr. Boynton comes back. <laughs> Pardon me, Walter, but how long have you been standing here alone, cackling? Oh, hi, Harriet. I just translated a French note that Mr. LeBlanc gave Miss Brooks, and I... Oh, gosh, I forgot to give her back the note. No? But, Walter, you can hardly understand a word of French, even after three terms. Well, that's all right. Neither can Miss Brooks. She was in love with a Spanish teacher named Gonzales when she was a kid, and that's why it was so easy for me to translate for her. All I had to do was make a guess at it. A guess? Sure. Oh, what would a Frenchman put in a note to a woman? It's got to be about l'amour toujours. <gasps> <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc is a romantic figure, all right I'll bet he writes a beautiful love letter Here, let me read it, Walter Okay Now, what does it say? It says, Dear Miss Brooks As there is no other member of the faculty who can help me at this time I must ask a favor yeah, it Doesn't sound very romantic so far Well, quiet, Walter Listen to this I have promised to buy our principal's car but due to a most mortifying shortage of finances, I must borrow $50 immediately if I am to keep my word. <laughs> Can you lend it to me, anxiously, Paul LeBlanche? How do you like that guy? He's not wooing her. He's biting her. I'm sorry to be late, Mr. LeBlanc, but I had to catch up on a little reading. Oh, sit down, mademoiselle. As always, you look charming. And now then, about my notes. What is your answer? The answer? Oh, by all means, we. Oui. You mean it? Of course. Oh, 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 how marvelous. You are an angel, a dream girl, a dream girl. I'm also a luster cream girl. <laughs> I don't see why you should get so excited about it. After all, under similar circumstances, I've said yes before, you know. <laughs> you have. Oh, dozens of times. <laughs> you, uh, you must be a teacher a long time to be able to act so generously. Well, don't forget, I am also a woman. Well. Now, <laughs> <laughs> you have said yes to me. That is the main thing. Now, tell me, Miss Brooks... Uh, uh, when can I pick it up? Pick it 
up. <laughs> That's a quaint figure of speech. Um, <clears throat> you can pick me up at 7.30 this evening. Oh, I was hoping I would not have to wait that long. Oh, you impetuous Frenchman, you. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose I am. After all, it takes a little while even to receive aid from the Marshall Plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> what am I laughing at? You better think of something mighty fast, Walter. It was your meddling that got Miss Brooks into this mess. Yeah, I know it, Harriet. And I know how embarrassed she'll be when she finds out that all Mr. LeBlanc wants is to borrow $50 from her. Oh, I wish we could think of some way to get her out of it. But Daddy's been trying to, un to unload that heap of his for six months, and he's never had a better offer. Gee, it's after seven o'clock. Oh, wait a minute, Harriet. Say that again. It's after seven o'clock. Oh, not that. The part about the better offer. Oh, never mind. Skip it. Harriet, if you'll excuse me now, I gotta get to a phone. I may not save Miss Brooks any embarrassment, but I just gotta save her $50. <laughs> You look absolutely lovely, Connie I'm sure Mr. LeBlanc will be enchanted with you from the moment he arrives Oh, it's nice of you to say so, Mrs. Davis And now, if you don't mind, I'll stay here in my room for the rest of the evening Oh, I don't mind In fact, I'll close the door for you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dear Have a nice time da 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 I'll be right there, Mr. LeBlanc. Don't break your neck. It's not Mr. LeBlanc. <laughs> well, Mr. Conklin, this is an unexpected intrusion. A pleasure. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Well, you are a super salesman, Miss Brooks. I am? I don't know what you told LeBlanc in the cafeteria today, but it certainly nailed him down. He asked me to meet him here tonight to close the deal on that jalop, uh, that bargain I'm selling him. He asked you to meet him here? Oh, now, isn't that cute? He probably wants to take me for a ride. Did you bring it with you? Yes. I towed it over. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got the ownership papers right here, and as soon as Mr. LeBlanc Oh, I'll arrives, get it. You... Welcome, Mr. LeBlanc. Come on in. Oh, good evening, Miss Brooks. Well... Alone at last, eh? Yes, yes, indeed. You'll be alone in no time. I'm a man that likes to do business fast. Here are the ownership papers, LeBlanc. Take them. Oh, thank you, sir. But first, I... You're getting uh... a great buy tonight, LeBlanc, isn't he, Miss Brooks? Oh, a dilly. Think of it. <laughs> Just $50 for a car that's only been driven 129,000 careful miles. <laughs> By its original 12 owners. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, if you will wait one moment for me, I must speak with Miss Brooks alone. Will you come into the kitchen with me, Miss Brooks? The kitchen? But I... uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Brooks. I'll wait right here in the living room. Probably needs a little more reassurance. Go to it. What am I, a teacher or a used car dealer? <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, the time has come. <laughs> now we can get together, eh? In the kitchen? <laughs> I, uh, I did not want to mention it in front of Mr. Conklin, but as I stated in my note, Miss Brooks, I will be very grateful if you will lend me the $50 immediately. $50? <laughs> yes. After you read my notes, that is the 50 you said we too. So that's what I said we too. Where did I get my hands on that Walter Denton? Denton? I don't understand. No, neither did he, him and his first term French. <laughs> Look, Mr. LeBlanc, I'll try to break this to you as gently as possible. About the fifty dollars. We? Oui. No, not exactly. In French, what's the opposite of we? Oui? No. That's it? I non got it. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you say no? Oui, oui, non. <laughs> but I assure Monsieur Conclin that the fifty dollars. Uh... Oh. Uh, oh, I see it all now, Miss Brooks. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> no, I'm not. Ho ho. <laughs> but Miss Brooks, after our meeting in the cafeteria, I, I I thought I know you did, but it was all a misunderstanding, Mr. LeBlanc. I'd lend you the money in a minute if I had it, but I haven't. Honestly, I haven't. I'll show you what's in my bank. I'll even let you hold it up to your ear and rattle it. <laughs> well. Naturally, Miss Brooks, I'm quite disappointed. 
But if it is, as you say, all a misunderstanding, perhaps I'd better return these ownership papers to Monsieur Conklin. The quicker, the better. After all, the evening is young yet, which is more than I can say for the car. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand perfectly. Goodbye, sir, and thank you. Oh, oh, I took the liberty of answering your phone, Miss Brooks. As it happened, the call was for me. I left word at home where I could be reached. Now then, Mr. LeBlanc... Allow me to speak first, sir. I, I am certain that your car is every bit as wonderful... Just, just, just as, a uh... moment. Miss Brooks, would you step into the kitchen with me, please? Why not? I sort of miss the old place. <laughs> Uh, excuse us, Mr. LeBlanc. Miss Brooks, now that I've already given LeBlanc the ownership papers, the minute he hands me $50, the deal is official. You've got to help me talk him out of it. Talk him out of it? You mean you don't want him? That to... call I just received was from a Mr. Horace Winthrop. He saw my car parked outside the house, and he offered me $150 for it. $150? He told me the minute he saw it, he went out of his mind about it. That boy needs shock treatments. <laughs> Now, I realize you have a way with Mr. LeBlanc. You can succeed in changing his mind. Hence, a proposition. If you can coax him out of buying my car, I'll split the $100 profit with you. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, he... As evidence of my good faith, I'm willing to pay you in advance. I just happen to have the cash on me, Miss Brooks. 20, 40, 50. Miss Brooks, there's $50 on top of that stove. In cold cash. What do you want me to do? Heat it? <laughs> Don't spar, Miss Brooks. I promised I'd meet Mr. Winthrop in 15 minutes. If you don't act quickly, it may be Pardon the intrusion, Mr. Conklin, but I could return home if you would only let uh, me Miss stay. Brooks wishes to have a little chat with you, my boy. But, sir... I'll wait for you in the living room. Why won't he let me tell him I can't buy his car? He is only delaying my embarrassment. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc, there's not going to be any embarrassment. Hey, you... Hey, I, I don't understand. I... Oh, now I do... You and that sense of humor. Huh? <laughs> On the stove, my fifty dollars. Oh, now just a minute. That isn't. The... Oh, Mr. Conkley. Mr. Conkley. <laughs> yes. Mr. Yes, Mr. Conkley. Mr. Conkley. Mr. Conkley. I have your fifty dollars. He certainly has. <laughs> Congratulate me. I am now the proud owner of a Stutz. <laughs> repair bills. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you failed. Give me back my money. Patience, Mr. Conklin, patience. Mr. LeBlanc, I forbid this sale. Give him back the 50, Mr. Conklin. Uh, Give it to him. Oh, of course. Here you are, LeBlanc. Uh, but, 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 Miss, Miss Brooks, There's I, uh... something you ought to know about that car, Mr. LeBlanc. You can't get it started, no matter how hard you crank it. Its battery is dead, its spark plugs are dragging, and its rear end doesn't spark. <laughs> <laughs> May we. <laughs> Plus which, I think it only fair to tell you that the wheels are out of line, it has no radiator, no clutch, and no brakes. Well, Monsieur Conklin, I have come to the conclusion that I do not want your car. Gad, what a bitter pill to swallow. <laughs> well, I've got to be running along now. Can I drop you somewhere, Mr. LeBlanc? Oh, you are too kind. No, he's only one kind. <laughs> But it's still early, Mr. LeBlanc. Isn't there something you'd like to do? Well, now that you, you mention it, Miss Brooks, there is. I know of a used car lot not far from here with $50. Oh, if you would drop me there, Mr. Conklin, something might catch my fancy. Very well. Come along, my boy. <laughs> oh, good night, Miss Brooks. Good night, my fancy. <laughs> and thank you for you know what. You're welcome, for no, I don't. <laughs> The last time I saw Paris. What uh -huh. happened, Connie? Did I hear Mr. LeBlanc leave? Yes, you did, Mrs. Davis. But it's only 8.15. Where did he go? He went to a used car lot. But don't worry about him, Mrs. Davis. He should feel right at home there. What do you mean, Connie? Most of their motors aren't running either. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. 
Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, five minutes later, while I was looking in the French dictionary for the translation to why did I bother in the first place, the telephone rang. Hello? Hi, Miss Brooks. It's me, Walter Denton. Oh, it's you, Walter. Now, please, Miss Brooks. I know you got a right to be mad at me, but you got to give me a chance to explain. I would have come over in person, but I wanted to wait until Mr. Conklin had left. He's gone, isn't he? Yes, Walter. Everybody's gone. Good. You see, the only way I could stop Mr. LeBlanche from putting the bite on you for $50 was to make sure that Mr. Conklin got a better offer for his car from somebody else. So I called a few minutes ago and offered Mr. Conklin 150 bucks. What? Sure. I told him I was a Horace T. Winthrop. You certainly are. <laughs> but you were a little late, Walter. Mr. LeBlanc has already bitten me for $50. You mean you had $50, Miss Brooks? Well, Mr. Conklin gave it to me, Walter. It was my commission for talking Mr. LeBlanc out of buying his car so that Mr. Winthrop could... But now there is no Mr. Winthrop, and Mr. Conklin will certainly want his... Oh, what's the use? If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. In hoc signo, veritas disputantum. What does that mean, Miss Brooks? That's Latin for, I should have stood in Nogales with Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Mustard Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using palm olive lather shaving cream. 1,251 men tried the palm olive lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before... Three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves, the Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Oh, old friends like old songs are said to be mellow with age. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, feels that this is uh, very definitely true. Especially when it comes to our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin. Although Mr. Conklin isn't exactly old, or actually a friend, he does remind me of an old song. Sweetest little fellow, everybody knows. Don't know what to call him, but he's mighty lacking in something. <laughs> <laughs> what it is formed the topic of our conversation last Friday morning when my landlady and I sat down to a particularly early breakfast. Here's your coffee, Connie. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. I can't understand your constant friction with Mr. Conklin. He isn't naturally mean, is he? I should say not. He's had to practice for years. <laughs> oh, it isn't all his fault. I think a lot of his bad temper is due to his high blood pressure. Mm, I guess it is. 
When did he get his high blood pressure, Connie? Five years ago, this coming February. I see. Tell me, Connie, when did you join the faculty at Madison? Five years ago, this coming February. (laughs) That is a coincidence, isn't it? It could be, but I'm sure Mr. Conklin doesn't think so. You're so right, Mrs. Davis. He blames me for almost every little accident that occurs at school. That's why he's made me school safety supervisor. It's his ironic way of getting even. Getting even? For what? Oh, a few little incidents that occurred last week. What kind of incidents? Well, like last Wednesday after school. I happened to be leaving the building just as Mr. Conklin started down the steps, and I noticed a pencil lying right in his path. Naturally, I didn't want him to slip on it. Did you pick it up? Oh, there wasn't time for that. All I could do was jump forward and nudge him aside. Well, that certainly couldn't have made him angry. I nudged him down the whole flight of stairs. <laughs> My goodness, Connie, was he badly hurt? Oh, he wasn't hurt at all. Just a few lacerations here and there. <laughs> and his glasses were as good as new after some minor repairs. Minor repairs? Two new lenses. <laughs> anyway, now you know why Mr. Conklin declared this to be safety week at Madison. Well, I think it's a splendid idea. If everyone took proper precautions, accidents couldn't happen. Except to Mr. Conklin. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better get ready. Walter Denton's picking me up early today so I can check things before Mr. Conklin's inspection tour. All right, dear. Oh, before you go, would you like another egg or some more toast? No, thanks, Miss Davis. If I'm going to travel in Walter's car, I've got to watch my weight. The last time I rode up front with him, the back wheels didn't touch the ground once. <laughs> Your car's running very smoothly today, Walter. What'd you do to it? Well, on account of this being safety week, I decided to give it a thorough overhauling, Miss Brooks. So last night I took off the drive shaft, dismantled the transmission, and removed the rear end. (laughs) You know something? It goes better without them. (laughs) I put them all back, Miss Brooks, but I fixed everything up first. Can't be too careful with a car nowadays, you know. I like your attitude, Walter. In fact, you are hereby granted permission to help me with the safety campaign at school today. Oh, I'll be glad to, Miss Brooks. Of course, when I first heard about it, I thought it was just another arbitrary political move made by old Marblehead, uh, Mr. Conklin. (laughs) You know, to get himself in good with the Board of Education. But his daughter Harriet convinced me that it was for all our goods. All our goods? (laughs) Yes, ma'am. She sure is a sensible girl, and pretty, too. Yes, she is pretty. (laughs) And Harriet's a good student as well. I know. But most important of all, she's got sensational taste. Taste? She's been going steady with me for over a year. (laughs) Yes, she is pretty. (laughs) I'm taking her to the football rally tonight. We're having it out on the campus. You'll be there, won't you, Miss Brooks? As safety supervisor, I guess it's part of my job. Oh, we're not going to do anything dangerous. Just the usual normal pregame frenzy. Now, we'll have a nice big bonfire, and my pal Stretch Snodgrass is bringing a giant firecracker to open the festivities. Now, wait a minute, Walter. A carefully supervised bonfire may be all right, but the giant firecracker is definitely out. But why, Miss Brooks? Stretch knows how to handle fireworks. Gosh, you should have seen him last Fourth of July. I did see him last Fourth of July. He passed me on a skyrocket. <laughs> Look, Walter, I know Stretch is a dear pal of yours and a great football player, but he's not very bright. Well, I'll admit he's no Albert Einfeld, but... (laughs) If we're very careful, Miss Brooks... No, I'm sorry, Walter. Mr. Conklin's going to be at that rally, and I don't want anyone to get hurt, especially Mr. Conklin. I've had a couple of unfortunate encounters with our principal already this week. I know you have. You've done a wonderful job on him so far. (laughs) I was there when you helped him down the steps Wednesday after school. Boy, he sure was mad. Your presence didn't help matters any, Walter. Well, gosh, all I did was hand him back his glasses and say I was sorry. That isn't quite all you did, Walter. You handed him his glasses and you said you were sorry, and then you giggled right in his face. (laughs) Well, I couldn't help it, Miss Brooks. In times of great emotional stress, I always giggle. Mm. Uh, Well, here's the dear old school, Miss Brooks. They're pretty crowded. I thought we'd find a parking space easy this early. There's one there, Walter. Right in front of that car that just pulled up to the curb. You think I can squeeze in there, Miss Brooks? Of course. Now, just go straight back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Back, back. 
further. Back, back, back. <laughs> You've got about a foot. <laughs> Gee, we gave him a pretty bad whack. I wonder whose car it is. I'll get out and look on the steering wheel. Don't strain yourself, Miss Brooks. <laughs> It's my car you partially destroyed. Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin, but <clears throat> I'm sure there wasn't any great damage. Our rear bumper took most of the strain. Your rear bumper took most of the glass out of my headlights, too. I'll get those fixed up for you in a jiffy, Mr. Conklin. I'll just run over to the repair shop. Shut and... up. <laughs> Leave it to me, Mr. Conklin. I'll see that it's all taken care of. Oh, your front door is still open. Yes. Yes, I know. It does that whenever I'm hurled to the sidewalk. <laughs> I'll close it at once. Oh, let me do it for you, Mr. Conklin. It's not safe to have our car doors swinging open, you know. I'll get it. Mm. Seems to be stuck. Mm. Mm. Miss Brooks, did it ever occur to you that there might be a reason why my car door won't close? A reason? What reason? It's simply that my arm is still in it. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure we'll be able to... Your arm? Oh, is it hurt, Mr. Conklin? I'm becoming inured to pain. (laughs) Now that you've started your day in an ideal manner for a safety supervisor, I suggest that we continue on into school. Of course, sir. I... Just one thing, Miss Brooks. I want you to do me a small favor. Oh, anything, Mr. Conklin. What is it? Will you give me a five-minute head start into the building? <laughs> Well, we've still got a few minutes before class, Walter. Come into my room and we'll map out the rest of the day's safety measures. There are quite a few things that must be fixed around school. Oh, just a minute, Miss Brooks. There's Stretch Snodgrass over by the drinking fountain. Maybe he can give us a hand. He's very good at repair work. Hiya, Stretch. Hello, Walter. Morning, Miss Brooks. Morning, Stretch. How would you like to help us out today? This is safety week, you know, and Mr. Conklin's going on an inspection tour this afternoon. Yeah, I know. Harry was telling me about it. I think it's a swell idea. And it's for all our goods. There must be another way to say that. Stretch, all I want you to do is... Wait a second, what's that you're carrying? Well, this is a giant firecracker, Miss Brooks. I was going to use it for the rally tonight, but I just got it all wet when I took a drink. Got a match, Waller? Oh, sure, Stretch. Here. Stretch, you're not going to light that monster in school. Oh, of course not, Miss Brooks. I'm just trying to dry the fuse. Oh, there we are. Uh, just hold the match here for a little while, and then... Hey, it slid! Gosh, I better throw it out the window, huh? No, Stretch. You might hurt some of the kids out there. Here, give it to me. I'll throw it into the supply room. There won't be anybody in there this early. In she goes. <laughs> oh, thank goodness we got rid of that thing without hurting anyone. Look, Miss Brooks, the doorknob. It's turning. But who could possibly have been in there? (laughs) Who else? (laughs) Mr. Conklin. (laughs) Quiet, Walter. Gosh, Mr. Conklin, what did you do to your tie? It's all black. Who threw the hand grenade at me? <laughs> he, he went that way, Mr. Conklin. We didn't get a very good look at him. You weren't burned, were you? No. No, but a large box of ink wells fell on my right foot. <laughs> you better go downstairs to the infirmary, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> we'll help you. Here, give me your hand, Mr. Conklin. You'll get it later. <laughs> I'll try to limp over to the freight elevator and go down to the first aid room. Oh, this is painful. Boy, it's a good thing our school has an elevator. That's one thing about good old Madison, boy. It's a pretty darn modern kind of a school that has a self-operating brand new elevator. If that boy doesn't stop babbling, I'll break my remaining foot on him. (laughs) 
Now, help me into this elevator, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Here, I'll open the door for you. Now, in you go, Mr. Conklin. Thanks. That's funny. The light seems to be... (laughs) Mr. Conklin! Mr. Conklin, are you all right? I'm splendid, Miss Brooks. (laughs) But where's the elevator? You you didn't fall very far. Not far at all. Just don't get nervous, Mr. Conklin. That's right, sir. I'll go get a rope, and we'll have you up in nothing flat. Gee, I know he doesn't like me very much, but I can't help feeling sorry for Mr. Conklin. First, his car's wrecked, and then he gets slightly bombed, and now he's at the bottom of an elevator shaft. Miss Brooks? I know, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate dental cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. Well, after placing an out-of-order sign on the elevator and instructing the custodian, Mr. Jensen, to repair the safety gate as soon as possible, I resumed my hobby, teaching. Just before lunch period, however, I decided I'd better see how my deputy safety supervisors were making out. I found Harriet Conklin and Walter Denton at the down stairway near the elevator. Hi, Miss Brooks. Walter's just trying to fix this handrail. It's been pretty loose all week. Good for you, Walter. How are you doing with it? Uh, Pretty good, Miss Brooks. I'm trying to get this section off so I can repair it. Well, keep up the good work, kids. I'm going in and check with Mr. Jensen about that elevator. Come in. Hi, Mr. Jensen. No, Miss Brooks, I'm not. You're not what? Let me recapitulate for you. You just knocked on my door, then I said, come in. You did so. And as you entered my office, you said, hi, Mr. Jensen. I, in turn, rejected this description as spurious. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Jensen. I am not a bit high, Miss Brooks. (laughs) And such an allegation during school hours might well mean the beginning of the end for me as custodian of this establishment. Oh, I forgot how literal-minded you are, Mr. Jensen. It won't happen again. Now, let's get down to cases. There you go again. (laughs) There's alcoholism in your family somewhere. (laughs) Now, look, Mr. Jensen. Look where? I mean, listen. Then why don't you say listen? It's not such a terribly difficult word for an English teacher now, is it? Of course not. Now, just relax (laughs) and tell me simply what you want of me. There's a good girl. Where's a good girl? Great, now I'm doing it. (laughs) Mr. Jensen, all I want to know is how soon you're going to fix the elevator. The elevator isn't broken, Miss Brooks. It's just the latch on the street door level. I've sent out for the small part it needs, and when that comes, I'll take care of the matter. Good. Will you let me know when it's fixed? I won't have to, Miss Brooks. I shall merely remove the out-of-order sign, and then we'll all know, won't we? I suppose we will, Mr. Jensen. (laughs) You You shouldn't worry about the elevator, Miss Brooks. I'm a natural-born handyman. I have six children, you know. (laughs) I know. How are they, Mr. Jensen? Oh, fine, thanks. Just full of the dickens. Oh, read a lot, do they? No, but... (laughs) 
say, you got me that time, didn't you? <laughs> now, before you go, Miss Brooks, though, I'd like to be sure you don't consider me prudish or narrow-minded be because of my seeming resentment of your opening remark. You remember about my being high? Oh, of course not, Mr. Jensen. Just, I'd... you know, just between you and me, I, I like nothing better after working hours than to stop in at some cozy bar and grill and have myself five or six jiggers of television. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Miss Brooks. Umbriago, Mr. Jensen. <laughs> I don't like to curtail a teacher's lunch period like this, Miss Brooks, but I'll explain the reason in a moment. First, how are things in the safety campaign progressing? Oh, fine, Mr. Conklin. The elevator will be attended to very shortly, and everyone is pitching in to help put safety week over in a big way. Good. And, Mr. Conklin... May I say that in spite of some of the unfortunate incidents of the day, you look very well indeed. I do? Yes, sir. Your bandages are extremely neat. <laughs> Thank you. They do a nice job downstairs in the infirmary. But about our necessity for pe speeding things up, I just received a call from the Board of Education, Miss Brooks, and they're sending a new inspector over today to observe the result of our safety plan. Today? But when, Mr. Conklin? Any time now. He's a Mr. Blanchard, a very good friend of Mr. Stone, the head of the board. I'm going to make a last-minute tour before he comes, of course, but first, Miss Brooks, I'd like you to look at this electric fan. Electric fan in October? It's a safety model. If this sample meets with Blanchard's approval, we may put these in every room during the warm weather. Here, I'll start it. Now, go ahead, Miss Brooks. Put your finger in the fan. My finger? Go ahead. Perfectly safe. Well, thanks just the same, Mr. Conklin, but I prefer the old-fashioned manicure where the fingers stay attached to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are rubber blades, soft as tissue paper. Watch. I'll put my finger in. In. Out. In. Out. See? Nothing happens to it at all. It's a wonderful idea. Well... We'd better get going now. I'd like to inspect the fire extinguishing apparatus. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll open it. I'll open it. Hi, Daddy. Miss Brooks. Walt and I have been going over the wiring in the building. You know, for loose connections and stuff. Yeah. It wouldn't do for anything to go wrong the last day of safety week, would it, Mr. Conklin, huh? <laughs> I couldn't think of a more auspicious time to leave my office. If Mr. Blanchard is coming over, I'd better tidy up the place a bit, Daddy. I brought some glass wax for the window. It'll just take us a few minutes. You come along with me, Mr. Conklin. We'll check the fire apparatus. Very well, Miss Brooks. Now, you check the lamp connections, Walter, and I'll dust off Daddy's desk. Okay, Harriet. I'd better take this fan off it so that you can... Oops! Oh, gosh, I dropped it. I hope it didn't break. Well, snap it on. Okay. Gosh, nothing happens. It's busted, all right. Oh, what does your dad need a fan for in this kind of weather anyway? It must be his high blood pressure, Walter. But don't worry about it. We'll just put this rubber one away and get the one he's got in his closet. <laughs> it's an old-fashioned one with steel blades, but it's better than nothing. Oh, sure. Now, what's the difference as long as there's something cooling off, old Marblehead? Ugh, your daddy. <laughs> The uh, nozzle of this fire extinguisher doesn't seem to be hanging just right. What do you think, Miss Brooks? Well, I'm not really an expert nozzle hanger, Mr. Conklin, but <laughs> maybe I can straighten it out a bit. Uh, be careful with it, Miss Brooks. When tilted at a certain angle, these things can be treacherous. Oh, I'll be very careful, sir. Just take it like this and... <laughs> you certainly were careful, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Not a drop missed me. <laughs> Take my hanky, Mr. Conklin. Here, I'll put this thing back where it's... Never... <laughs> put that thing down! Yes, sir. Oh! <laughs> oh, my foot! Oh, it cut right through to my instep. Now I've got to go down to the infirmary again. Well, what can I say to you, Mr. Conklin? There's I... nothing you can say to me now, Miss Brooks. But I'll have a few things to say to you when I come back upstairs. I'm afraid you'll have to walk down, Mr. Conklin. The out-of-order sign is still on the elevator. Maybe if I help you... You've helped me enough for one day, thank you. Now go away. If I take it easy, I think I can negotiate these stairs. Wish I had my glasses on. 
Oh, well, I'll just take a firm grip on the handrail. Oh, about that handrail, Mr. Handrail for the staircase with me. Just in time, Stretch. Throw it down to Mr. Conklin. <laughs> What's Daddy doing down there, Miss Brooks? Mr. Blanchard is waiting for him in his office. What? Quick, Harriet, you take your father into the infirmary, and I'll go back and stall Mr. Blanchard along. Is there anything I can do, Miss Brooks? Yes, Walter. Stay away from Mr. Conklin until we have danger week. Is someone <laughs> going to help me down the rest of these steps or not? I'll be right there, Daddy. Straighten things out up here, will you, fellas? Sure, Harriet. Gosh, this fire extinguisher is a mess. Uh, we better hang an out of order sign on it so Mr. Jensen fixes it up before the safety inspection. You're right, Walter. Wait a minute. Well, here's one right by the elevator. Out of order. I'll just borrow this for a while. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Blanchard, as safety supervisor for Madison High, I've worked very closely with our principal. In other words, Miss Brooks, you've been at Mr. Conklin's side constantly. Oh, yes, indeed. I've been at his side, on his feet, in his hair. Uh, that is to say, <laughs> we've worked hand in hand all through the week. Fine. I've never met Mr. Conklin, but my friends on the board tell me he's always leaned toward safety in the school. Right again, Mr. Blanchard. Mr. Conklin leaned a long way today. Uh, <laughs> He's even thinking of putting in safety first fans. See, like this one on his desk. I'll just turn it on for you. Now, put your finger in here, Mr. Brown. What? Miss Brooks? Oh, go ahead. You only live once. <laughs> now, it's rubber. It's just like tissue paper. These things make me nervous, Miss Brooks. However, if you insist, I'll insert my cane among the blades. Here we are. I can't say I like my introduction to Madison High, Miss Brooks. If this is your idea of a joke... Oh, no, sir, it's no joke. Somebody must have switched fans on me. Well, I think perhaps I'd better meet Mr. Conklin and... Ouch! One of those flying splinters lodged in my thumb. Let's see. Oh, come on, Mr. Blanchard. We'd better go down to the infirmary. The infirmary? But it's just a sliver. I can... Oh, please, sir, follow me. That's one thing we insist on at Madison. Prompt care must be taken of the slightest accident. But, Mr. Conklin, I've got to see him and... Well, this... this is a shortcut. Yes, Mr. Blanchard, in this institution, we believe in safeguarding the health and well-being of every man, woman, and beast, a child. Where are we going, Miss Brooks? Well, fortunately, we won't have to walk down to the first aid room. I see the out-of-order sign has been removed from the elevator. An elevator? But if it's only one floor down, we... Oh, I wouldn't think of it, Mr. Blanchard. The stairs are not safe without the handrail. Here, I'll open the door for you. After you, sir... Uh, thank you, but the light seems to be... Ah! Oh, no! Pardon me, Miss Brooks, but I understand Mr. Blanchard has arrived. Tell me, has he been here very long? No, sir, he just landed. <laughs> he wanted to see the infirmary, so I, I thought I'd take him down, and the out-of-order sign is off the elevator, as you can see, so it was only natural for uh, me to stop suppose... Stop babbling, Miss Brooks. Gentlemen. I've got to meet this gentleman. If he's in the elevator, that's where I... Look out below! <laughs> Mr. Blanchard, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin, Mr. Blanchard. <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. 
Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after Mr. Blanchard awarded Madison High a safety pennant, with a picture of a skull and crossbones on it. <laughs> I left the scene of the crime and hurried home. That night, I phoned Mr. Conklin to see if he felt any better. And just as I hung up, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, came into the room. Was that Mr. Boynton, Connie? No, Mrs. Davis. He's still away at that biologist convention. But he'll be back next week. I just had the most peculiar conversation with Mr. Conklin. What did he say? He just recited a little rhyme to me. It's one I haven't heard since I was a kid. A rhyme? Which one, Connie? He just said, Sticks and stones can break my bones, and you didn't do a bad job either. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin is played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Bob Jellison, and Ed Begley. Here's good shaving news. Three men out of every four can get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves with Palmolive Brushless Shaving Cream. This is not just a claim. Here's the proof. 1,297 men tried the Palmolive brushless way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three men out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palmolive brushless yourself. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the proved Palmolive brushless way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Yes, it's time once again for Eve Arden in another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, the football fever is sweeping through our schools once more, and Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, is no exception. No, indeed. Most of the kids at Madison eat, sleep, and talk nothing but football. Of course, it doesn't affect me one way or another. When I start my class in the morning, I simply bark the signal for order, call my monitors into a huddle, and with a single wing to the right, do a reverse line buck through the second act of Macbeth. <laughs> Last Wednesday, when Walter Denton, one of my pupils, joined my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and me at breakfast, I chided him about not doing his homework properly. His reaction was instantaneous. I don't see how you can say that, Miss Brooks. Why, ever since the fall term started, I've been doing my football religiously. Safe <laughs> breath. No, you're not quite sure, Walter, that those little coffee cakes and some milk will be enough for you. No, ma'am. <laughs> That's all I've got in the house Oh, then it'll be enough 
boy is a realist. <laughs> I wish I had something else to offer you. A growing boy should eat a big breakfast, especially an athlete like Walter. Athlete? Yeah, I told Mrs. Davis about it before you came into breakfast, Miss Brooks. I'm going out for the team this year. I've just got to get my letter. You? But, Walter, you don't seem to have too much aptitude for athletics. Who hasn't? Well, the only reason I didn't make the football team last year was be- because I hurt my arm trying out for the baseball team. <laughs> Did you make the baseball team, dear? Oh, well, no, Mrs. Davis. But only because I hurt my foot trying to get my M in track. <laughs> And I'd have made that, too, if my ribs weren't so sore from water polo. Well, that's one thing about Walter. If he doesn't get his M from Madison, he'll get it from the Mayo Brothers Clinic. (laughs) And maybe you'll be luckier this season, Walter. Now, as soon as you finish moistening your fingers and picking cake crumbs off the tablecloth, we can get started for school. Okay, Miss Brooks. Gee, if I do make the team, I'll be playing alongside my pal Stretch Snodgrass. He's one of the best athletes Madison ever had, you know. And then I'll have my dad move my things out there in our truck. Oh, great. Maybe the marmosets would carry them over for you. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you got the idea for me to move, Miss Brooks. That porch is pretty drafty. Well, I'm going to practice a little while longer. Well, how about you, Walter? Want to work out? Oh, sure, Stretch. How about you, Miss Brooks? Want to watch? No, thanks, Walter. I'd better get into school. Mr. Conklin wants to see me before my first class. Well, okay, but you don't know what you're missing. Old Stretch here sure has an educated toe. Good. Let's hope it may one day spread through his brain. (laughs) Miss Brooks, I've summoned you here to my office to commend you for the splendid work you're doing with Stretch Snodgrass. Well, thank you, Mr. Conklin. But you've got to keep that boy eligible for football. If Madison's team doesn't make a presentable showing this season, I'll never hear the end of it from Jason Brill. Clay City's principal? The same. He's the bane of my existence, Miss Brooks. We've been rivals a good many years. Oh, even before you were principals of rival schools? Before we were teachers. Even in state normal, I found him abnormal. (laughs) He'll go to any lengths to defeat and embarrass me. Now, Brill phoned me last night and said he'd be dropping in to see me this morning. He said he'd have a juicy bit of news for me. Well, if he thinks he's got juicy news for me, I've got still juicier news for him. Do you know what it is, Miss Brooks? You're opening an orange aid stand. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I just learned that Biff Mooney, one of the greatest college football players, is interested in a high school coaching job in this part of the country. I've already opened negotiations for his services by mail, and it's a foregone conclusion that he'll accept my offer. <laughs> Ah, uh, I can't wait until I see the expression on Brill's face when I tell him about it. <laughs> In some states, that laugh would be banned. Uh, come in. Well, good morning, Osgood. Good morning to you, Jason. I have a juicy bit of news for you this morning. Well, I have a juicy bit of news for you, too, Osgood. Uh, Oh, pardon me. How are you, Miss Brooks? Juicy, thanks. (laughs) Osgood, I've just signed Biff Mooney to coach the Clay City football team this season. Well, isn't that nice? Now I'll just tell you what I've got up my... Biff Mooney! (laughs) Remember that expression you were waiting to see on Mr. Brill's face? Yes. You're wearing it. (laughs) Now, see here, Brill. In the first place, I don't believe a man like Mooney would be knucklehead enough to sign with your outfit. But even if he has, a good coach can't make a team without material. Material? Why, last season our backs went through your line like it was damp cheesecloth. Well, it's not going to be that way this season, Mr. Brill. Uh, Go ahead, Miss Brooks. Tell him. This season, it's going to be dry (laughs) cheesecloth. We've got some great players on the squad. Players like Stretch Snodgrass. Stretch Snodgrass? Who's he? (laughs) That's him. What was that? Uh, Pardon me, Osgood. Is that a football in your lap, or have you gone off your diet? (laughs) I've told those kids a thousand times... Go... Come in. Well, I'm awful sorry, Mr. Conklin, but I'm afraid I kicked my football in here. I'm afraid you did, Stretch, but I don't understand why. I thought I told you to confine your practicing to the other end of the field. But I did, Mr. Conklin. That's where I kicked it from. Well, there's absolutely no excuse in the world for... 
Nice kick, boy. <laughs> you mean to tell me that that ball was propelled here by that boy's foot? It wasn't flown here by one of his blue jay corn plasters. <laughs> that, Mr. Brill, is our Stretch Snodgrass, one of the greatest triple threat quarterbacks in the country. Stretch, this is Mr. Brill, principal of Clay City High. Hi, sir. Hello, son. <laughs> Tell me, where did you learn to kick like that? Oh, it's just natural with me, I guess. But if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss football no more this morning. I just got some bad news about my pal, Walter Denton. He's been cut off the football squad. Why, Stretch? Because he was the 29th man on it, and we only got 28 uniforms. Well, it would be a little embarrassing if he was sent in as a substitute. <laughs> I don't see how a spindly pippet like Denton could go out for the team in the first place. He couldn't carry a football in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, you're talking about my pal. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me. Gosh, when he heard I was moving out to my aunt's place on Clark Street, he even offered to pick me up every morning. Uh, did you say you were moving to Clark Street? Yes, sir. It's way out in the 3900 block. Yeah, but that's halfway to Clay City. Why, you're in a district that... Why don't we have lunch together this afternoon, boy? You stay in the school cafeteria? Really? Sure. He's a three-letter man. He's a three-letter man in my English class, too. After A, B, and C, he's a goner. <laughs> Well, we're almost there, Miss Brooks. We'll park down by the athletic field, if you don't mind. Stretch might be working out early this morning. All right, Walter. You're certainly fond of the kid, aren't you? Yeah, he's my buddy, Miss Brooks. And I want you to know that we're sure grateful to you for keeping him eligible this year. Gosh, if you didn't help him with his studies after school, I don't know what would happen. I do. <laughs> well, here's the football field. I'll just roll up these windows and lock the door. <laughs> Well, you've got the ball. Why aren't you running with it? He came right through the window. Are you all right, Miss Brooks? If I am, I owe it all to my shatterproof skin. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. I don't usually kick them that crooked. Oh, well, that's okay, Stretch. Gosh, look at all that glass. Lucky the laces weren't cut. That football is school property. <laughs> well, I'm school property, too. Let's take a look at my laces. <laughs> Well, I'm sure glad you're okay, Miss Brooks. Well, the reason I'm working out this early is because they're remodeling my room at home, and I had to sleep on our drafty back porch, and I got a bad king in my leg. You got a king in your leg? <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you pull a lingament. <laughs> yeah, those lingaments can sure cause a lot of trouble. in your room, Stretch? Well, you know, our living quarters are behind my father's pet shop. Yeah? And Dad got a big shipment of marmosets in the other day, and he needs more space. But it's only temporary. It'll take a few weeks to switch the bedrooms around, then I'll be back indoors again. Yeah, but meantime, you can get a bad draft and pull another lingament. <laughs> <laughs> or even bruise a tendon. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, Stretch. You've got to find another place to sleep. Walt is right, Stretch. Wait a minute. Haven't you got an aunt who lives alone? You mean the one you met at the movies the other night? Yes. She seemed inordinately fond of you. Oh, that's just the way she acts. She really likes me. <laughs> <laughs> but she lives way out on Clark Street. That's halfway to Clay City. Well, look, if you're worried about getting to school in the morning, Stretch, I'll be happy to pick you up and drive you in. After all, if we're going to be on a football team together, we'll be practicing a lot in the mornings. Gee, that's awful nice of you, Walter. I'll call Aunt Minnie before school this morning. I'm sure she won't mind. About 12? Just the two of us? From the picture you were meant for me? Now, see here, Brill. Yeah, tell me, I... boy, do you kick them that far often? Well, without I should do any boasting, I almost never done no kick in which the ball don't travel over 70, 80 yards hardly. Amazing. And how do you pass? In English, by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. 
Eminent dental authority supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate dental cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities. Far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities. Help stop tooth decay before it starts. All during my morning classes, I worried about Jason Brill having lunch with Madison's star quarterback. When I communicated my fears to Mr. Conklin, he said... Miss Brooks, we've got to find out what that blackguard is up to at all costs. So when lunch period finally rolled around, I followed the blaggard into the school restaurant and borrowed an apron from one of the girls behind the steam table. Uh, come over here to this corner table, Stretch. We won't be disturbed here. Okay, Mr. Brill. Uh, now, sit down, my boy. Now then, there's something I must talk to you about in strictest confidence. In strictest confidence? It concerns your football career. Who gets the lima beans? Uh, Miss Brooks. I, I thought this was 